Well, good afternoon, folks. Uh, this is Jim Hodson with the Fort Worth Aviation Museum here again with uh, with Gary Goff today. Uh, Gary's going to be behind the camera for us while we uh, we do our our uh, Wings Awards for 2021. Uh, we're here at the Royal Flying Corps Memorial and uh, and grave sites at the Greenwood Memorial Park uh, to honor one of our recipients today. Uh, there's a Texas historical marker here that uh, describes uh, the story of the Royal Flying Corps and the, the graves that are here. But we're going to let Doc talk about that. But I'm going to talk about the Wings Award for just a, just a few minutes here. Uh, the Wings Award is something that uh, we at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum uh, started up about six years ago. Uh, the intent was to recognize individuals who have done things here in the, in the local area to promote our, uh, our aviation heritage and also serve as examples uh, for, for young people to learn about things that could be possible for them because we talk a lot about achievements during the number of uh, the people who have, who have earned the award. I'm going to go through a little bit later and tell you about previous recipients, but some of the things that are important about this is that we look for three things uh, in somebody as to why they, they have done something significant. And it usually uh, evolves down to the three Ds, desire, dedication, and determination. Uh, people had a desire to do something. Uh, they had the, uh, the determination and the dedication to move through the process, whatever that was, uh, to the conclusion of, uh, of that process. The only difference that really takes place between the individuals is the resources that they had available to them. We can take somebody like, uh, like uh, Doc, Doc Murphy today, whose resources were limited and started with a model airplane club. And we're going to talk about Eamon Carter later on, who had vast resources and was able to do uh, much bigger things. But that doesn't mean that any one of these achievements are less important than the other. So it's not only a matter of recognizing the individuals, but it's also a way to help educate the community and hopefully inspire young people that of uh, the things that they can do as long as they've got the desire to do it and they're dedicated and they're determined to see it through. So we're going to walk up here now and we're going to go, uh, go meet with uh, Doc Murphy. Doc, good afternoon. Afternoon, Jim. Thanks for being with us here today. My pleasure, sir. So, Doc, we're, rec we're recognizing you with one of our Wings Awards this year because uh, you have been involved with, with this memorial and this grave site for 35 years, correct? That's, that's right. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the award. Wow. And so uh, we're presenting this to you, the 2021 Wings Award, presented to Dr. Griffin T. Murphy in recognition of 35 years of dedicated support uh, and leadership with the Friends of the Royal Flying Corps uh, Cemetery and conducting biannual commemoration services at the Royal Flying Corps grave sites here in Greenwood Memorial Park. Most impressive, sir. No, uh, your your achievements are most impressive. Well, thank so, you. So uh, I'm going to take this and set it aside oh, uh, so that uh, you can tell us a little bit about the grave sites. We were here and visited with you uh, some time ago, but the uh, the sound system wasn't working well for right, us then. Right, right. So uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the memorial and, and why it's important. Well, it's important because we had 6,000 uh, British, Canadian, and American volunteers within the Imperial Royal Flying Corps who came down here to Texas in the fall of 1917 and left at the end of April 1918. And the purpose, purpose is often given to get better flying training weather, but they were also kick-starting the American aviation program, really, because right. as you know, uh, we just had a handful of old uh, JN3 Jennies and, uh, you know, very few pilots. And so they really, they really got it kick-started and going, and they built three fields here. And uh, there were 39 of them killed, and uh, most of them in flying training accidents. There's some of them that died of illness. And one guy, for some reason, jumped off a of train in Chicago. <laughs> we don't know about that. Uh, and uh, uh, 11 of the guys were buried here. There's one Canadian dependent child buried here, the child of Canadian Captain Charles Doerr. And uh, we don't know, and the Imperial War Graves, uh, Commonwealth War Graves people can't tell us why, of the 39 killed, there are only 11 of them buried here. Now, there's one additional burial uh, that was uh, done by a chap who passed away in old age. 
and uh, in Florida, and it was kind of neat. I talked to his his son, and uh, the, one of the British jump jet carriers, I think it was the Invincible, was down there, and the they gave him a real send off with the Royal Navy sailors carrying his body off the wow. ship and everything. So, uh, yeah, we do have 12 buried here, and they are, you know, uh, three Brits, uh, three American volunteers, and six Canadians, and this uh, uh, baby door. Well, what got you interested in becoming a caretaker for this place? Well, my dad died in 1986, and I went out here to check on the closing of the grave, and one of my buddies in the model airplane club, a guy named Bob Horton, had tipped me off about this, and he had a copy of the Baron Field Review. It was a Xerox copy, and I had seen that, so I was interested in that. And uh, I was driving around out here, and sure enough, I found it. And I thought, well, I'm going to walk up and look at that thing. I looked at it, and I thought, you know, this is something that really deserves some attention. I mean, you know, somebody, somebody ought to do something. So I organized a little uh, kind of uh, impromptu memorial service with some of the guys from the Model Airplane Club, and we had a Civil Air Patrol chaplain out here. And I started thinking about it, thought, well, maybe we could do something a little bit more. And in 1988, I got a uh, uh, Royal, uh, Royal Air Force squadron leader, a fellow named Dick Fallis, who was up at uh, NATO EDGEP School in Wichita Falls. And he came down here, so we had RAF representation. And somewhere or another, I found somebody with a tiger moth, and they flew okay. over with a tiger moth. And over the years, uh, you know, again, doing bi trying to go for biennial celebrations, then sometimes we'd have dignitaries that were here for the air show. And one time we had a full air vice marshal here, and another time we had a Canadian general here. And so we were doing some extra ones that were, were you know, kind of impromptu. And John Bailey, the old man that ran this cemetery, finally said, Doc, you're just doing too many things. <laughs> and so that's how we st we started on even years, but then we wound up going to odd years because John Bailey kind of said, you know, you're doing it. But we're still open to doing those when right. we do have air shows and stuff in town. And uh, and I think the present management of Greenwood, you know, progressed his soul, John Bailey, World War II armor veteran, uh, is no longer with us, but uh, the present leadership out here at Greenwood is very supportive and very interested in seeing these things go forward. Uh, one interesting thing, the Royal Flying Corps cap badge was stolen off of the uh, monument sometime in the uh, late 80s, and uh, Greenwood put it back. They had a new Did one fabricated. Okay. This monument was paid for by local contributions as well as contributions from uh, the veterans themselves that were associated with the three fields. Carol Davis did the research on that and found out that the, this, I had thought it was put in in the 1920s, but no, it was put in right at the end of the war. Okay. And it was all, all supported by contributions from the veterans that flew out here as well as uh, from, uh, I guess, some of the public. Okay. And in fact, the veterans, the World War I Flyers Club that met out here, they had their last service, which they would always do it on November the 11th. And as far as I know, as far as I know, it wasn't close to the public, but they didn't advertise it. And I okay. don't know if they wanted people or not, but they had their last service out here in 1978. And uh, so we've, we've moved forward with it. it. Very interesting. It used to be that all I had to do was call the 301st fighter wing out at Carswell, and the guy would say, uh, sure, we can do it. Yeah. And then he'd, and, and he'd call me up in the morning because we didn't have cell phones or anything. He said, well, I'll give you a time hack. Yeah, there we go. And... Uh, well, and if uh, anybody's interested, they can go on YouTube and see some of the uh, the videos of the memorials that have taken place here. And I know there's stories about it and yeah. things that have taken place. Uh, since our involvement with you, uh, we've had flyovers and bagpipers or bands and, and gun crews and, uh, and everything else here. And the cemetery puts up tents and chairs and... Uh, we get a group here of uh, what would you say, two to three hundred people? I would times? say that's a, a fair guess. Yeah. And they may, we may have come close to yeah. four or five hundred a couple of times, but uh, but this is all about preserving the history, the the, the heritage here, because we're going to talk about another recipient in a little while. And the First World War was really a catalyst for aviation here in the area. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we uh, we're celebrating the hundred and tenth. Uh, anniversary of the first flight this week here, first powered flight this week here in Fort Worth, and uh, that took place in uh, in 1911. 
Well, not a lot took place after that. We went over to uh, Ryan's pasture a couple weeks ago and talked about that. That was in 1911. And in 1915, the first Aero Squadron came through, but there wasn't a lot of activity until the First World War. And that's when things really started to, uh, uh, to get interesting here and people really started to get interested in aviation and it really started to develop here in the area. So, Doc, we wanna thank you for what you've done over these years. I know a lot of times you've been in the shadows with this, and, uh, but uh, 35 years of, of service uh, in honor of these people is, uh, is commendable and we wanna just thank you and that's why you are now one of our Wings Awards well, uh, recipients. I, I do appreciate it. And let me point out, it's not all work. It, it's, fun to, it's fun to talk to pilots. It's fun to talk to the guys out at the base. It's fun to talk to the Marines that we try to Shanghai into the firing parties. It's, it's fun to, to, to meet everybody that comes in. And, and I, think it's, I just think it's a worthwhile endeavor. And the great thing about the, you guys at the Air Museum, you have been so supportive of it. And there's so many people that have come forward that uh, you know, I didn't even know. For example, I didn't know that Ben Guttery was with the Air Museum. Right. I just knew he was one of the guys that showed up and helped with the service. And he was willing to help uh, take care of some of the registration and try. We try to keep track of the people that come, and uh, you know. But you guys have really. I think it's been a great meld between. It is just just kind of people that walked up and the people with the Air Museum. You know, I mean, Carol Davis is a good example of that. She's turned turned out to be somewhat of a researcher on her own. I think Fine. something we didn't mention, we're standing in Canada right now, right? Well, or, or, or Great Britain. <laughs> or Great Britain. We're either in Canada or Great Britain. We're in the British, we're within the British Commonwealth somewhere, somewhere in Texas. Okay, so this is part of the, uh, the British Commonwealth grave system, it is. correct? It's so un, this it, is. They bought it in 1924. Okay. That's why I thought that originally these guys had been buried elsewhere and brought maybe from okay. impromptu graves, but the, but the, no, they were they were buried here during the war and I guess Maybe that was just a courtesy from Greenwood, as far as I know. But then the Commonwealth War Graves Commission actually purchased this plot in 1924. Okay. Uh, have you got any particular stories of any of these individuals you'd like to share? Well, uh, I guess the most notorious, there's one chap down here who uh, was married to two ladies. And when he was killed, you know, he was, talked his way into flying training at age 36. And uh, he was a railway man in England. Of course, railway men have that reputation. <coughs> and uh, when he when he passed away, that was that was discovered. That little discrepancy. Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, and we've got a little model here too. Uh, yeah. G Gary, uh, Gary, come on. This is uh, this is essentially the flying kites uh, that these men trained in here. It's a JN4 Jenny. This one is is in the uh, the colors of the commanding officer of Everman, who was a Marine. And uh, but this is the airplanes they flew here. They were Canucks, which means that they had slight differences to the uh, to the airframe, to the aileron system, and to the tail. Uh, they were the Canadian versions that had been modified, and uh, and they left them here when uh, when they went back to uh, went back to Canada. And uh, just one little aside, they came down here because they were trying to get out of the cold weather of Canada. And if you there's any weather historians out there, the winter of 1917. Uh, was one of the uh, the largest snowfalls uh, in the history of North Texas. Uh, they talked about getting their uh, getting their breakfast in the in the cook tents, and by the time they got back to the table, the breakfast was frozen to the plate. So, uh, so it was quite uh, quite an experience. And the Canadians had wool uniforms, but the Americans didn't. <laughs> so, well, Doc, is there anything else you'd like to tell people about the memorial before uh, before we move on to the other recipients? Well, I will say that uh, we are planning one. The uh, request to the Department of the Air Force for a flyover is already in. We have uh, the Consul General of Canada in Dallas. Rachel McCormick is going to be the primary speaker. Kay Granger is invited, but that's yet to be determined whether she will come or not. Uh, and uh, we do have a new Royal Air Force officer stationed at the base at Greenville and uh, a man named McIver, he's a squadron leader, he will be coming over to represent the Royal Air Force. And so we, we do have planning underway. And so that's for this year in 2021? That's for 20, 2021. And do you know the date specific? Yeah, it'll, it'll be Memorial Day, uh, it'll be May the 31st. Uh, my thinking is that uh, we may still need to do some social distancing, but I think that the the real bad part of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic will be over by then and, and with some care I think it can be done. Uh, 
of course, if there's a problem, we could have to cancel it. But yep. as of now, we think, I think it can be a good one. So for now, put that on your calendar, uh, May 31st, uh, coming up in just a few months. Uh, love to have you come out here for this and uh, and see it. It's uh, it's impressive. Usually about 10 in the morning is when we get started. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll have some publicity. And the uh, c cemetery said they're actually going to buy advertising space in Good. the paper. Well, and we will plan to do a Facebook Live that day from out here, too. So, Doc, again, congratulations. Thank you for everything a that you have done Reserve salute to you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and, uh, and carry on. All right. We'll do it. So let me uh, let me just do this with you. I'm going to oh, click, yeah, click yeah. you off. Okay. Get me unhooked. Well, we'll worry about unhooking you later. Okay. So what we're going to uh, do here is go on and, and talk about the uh, uh, the other people that we're, we're recognizing today. And uh, before I get into them, I'm going to just uh, go through the list of, of prior recipients of the Wings Award because I think it's it's a good idea to recognize them. We're going to just take the time to do that. In 2015, we recognized the B-36 Peacemaker Museum uh, for its many years of preserving the history of the B-36 Peacemaker and other aircraft produced in Fort Worth. Uh, we recognized Morningstar Partners of Fort Worth for their preservation of the National Air Transport Travel Air 5000 used in the 1920s and later, and it was owned by Eamon Carter Sr. Uh, Cowtown Aircrafters of Justin for their restoration of Eamon Carter's Travel Air 5000, and Mr. Harry Hansen for his years of dedication, conservation, preservation, uh, and restoration of that Travel Air. In uh, 2016, we recognized uh, Dr. Dawn Youngblood of the uh, Tarrant County Archives for her collection of preservation efforts of local history. Uh, Mr. Philip Poole of Townsite Company, a real estate development company for his work in establishing First Flight Park. Uh, Andrew Orton Laird Sparks of Gray Star in recognition of their development uh, of the area around and financing for First Flight Park. In 2017, we recognized Mr. Robert Bass for his preservation of the 1933 American Airways Hangar and Administration Building at Meacham. Uh, Mr. Benny Keith, obviously posthumously, for his efforts in 1917 to bring the three World War I airfields to Fort Worth area, leading to North Texas becoming a world leader in aviation and aerospace development. Uh, Mr. Don Pyatt for 20 plus years of work as an aviation historian, researcher, videographer, author, volunteer, and proponent of North, uh, uh, North Texas aviation history. In 2018, we recognized Mr. Jerry Knatzer uh, for his significant contribution to the North Texas aviation history through his construction support uh, of uh, First Flight Park and the Blario 11 sculpture. Uh, Mr. Zim Zimmerman for his 20 plus years of support of North Texas aviation history and development of First Flight Park and the Blario 11 sculpture. In 2019, we recognized uh, Lieutenant Colonel Neil Anderson, USMC retired posthumously for being one of the initial YF-16 prototype test pilots who also flew the F-111 for uh, General Dynamics and Lockheed Martin. And Lieutenant Colonel Phil F. Ostriker, USMC retired posthumously for being one of the initial YF-16 prototype test pilots and who also flew the 111 for General Dynamics. Uh, last year, we recognized Congresswoman Kay Granger for her persistent initiative uh, and, and actions, uh, having resulted in bringing the number two General Dynamics YF-16 prototype back to Fort Worth. Uh, one of her staff members, uh, Ms. Johnny Cable, uh, uh, for also for her work uh, with Congresswoman Granger. Uh, Mr. Gregory Zagar and his staff at the Air Force Research Laboratory in Rome, New York, uh, for their assistance and persistence in helping us bring the YF-16 here. Uh, we also recognized uh, Mr. Ben Guttery, our collection manager, uh, for his initiative and actions that uh, resulted in bringing the airplane here. Ben actually found that the airplane existed and, uh, and started the ball rolling on what took place uh, to be about a four-year project to bring the airplane here. Again, we've recognized, uh, uh, we recognize uh, Doc, uh, Doc Murphy here this morning. Uh, our next recipient is uh, Mr. Uh, Gordon R. England, the Honorable Gordon England. Uh, we are presenting the award to him in recognition of his significant contributions to uh, North Texas aviation history through his leadership and valuable contributions to the successful uh, Gen General Dynamics YF-16 or F-16 Fighting Falcon and the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning aircraft. 
Those two programs, in addition to the many other things that he did, are probably the most significant aircraft productions of, uh, uh, since the Second World War here. And he was instrumental not only as uh, the president of, uh, of uh, General Dynamics and then later Lockheed with the F-16 program, he was also the 73rd and 74th uh, Secretary of the Navy. Uh, he was the acting Secretary of Defense for a period of time, and, and during that process, uh, helped uh, realize the F-35 uh, uh, acceptance and, and production here. Uh, one of the other things that he was extremely instrumental in is working with it then uh, Mayor Kay Granger uh, back in the uh, back in the 90s when the military came out and started to close bases. They closed Navy Dallas. They were closing Barksdale. And uh, it, it had a huge economic impact here in, in Fort Worth. And between then Mayor Granger and uh, between Gordon England, they helped get together and uh, help the government form, which is now considered the Joint Reserve Base concept. And the NAS JRB Fort Worth, or JRB NAS Fort Worth, is now the largest joint reserve base in the United States and has become an even bigger economic engine to the, uh, to the local area. So uh, with that, we will be presenting the award to Gordon. Uh, he's, uh, he's well, and, and here's one of the things that we talked about. He, he said to me, and I got a kick out of this, he said, I don't really need any more recognitions. He said, I've, I've, got, uh, I've got all kinds of trophies and plaques. And I, and I told him, I said, well, Gordon, this plaque isn't just for you and, and recognizing you, but it's also for the community to learn and understand some of the significant contributions that people have made here. And it's also uh, a point of inspiration for young people so that they can see some of the things that they can accomplish by staying in school and pursuing things. Our last and our next recipient is uh, Mr. Eamon Carter Sr. Uh, Eamon Carter was a, was a young man in 1911 uh, when, the, uh, when the Moissant aviators came here. And he was involved in aviation and became inspired by aviation. We think by that particular point in time, and later became more and more involved in it. And with his, uh, with his ability and the resources that he had, he promoted a number of different things. In 1924, for instance, he established the uh, Fort Worth Aviation Club, much like an oilman's club or a cattleman's club, and the intent was to promote aviation, which led to Meacham Airfield and a number of other things. By 1950, he had been recognized by the United States Air Force with an exceptional service uh, um, a medal and recognition. And also in that year, he was recognized uh, for and received the Frank Hawks Award, which is an award that was given to aviation pioneers. And uh, there's a lot of myth, there's a lot of legend, and there's even some truth in some of the stories about Eamon Carter. But I want to take the time to go through uh, the pages of narrative as to why he received that Frank Hawks Award, because some of these things I think the general public is not even aware of. So we're going to just take the time to go through this. January 1911. Uh, international aviators on the fairgrounds in Dallas were asked by Eamon Carter what they would charge to uh, stage an exhibition in Fort Worth. Mr. Young, the business manager, looked Carter up and down, presumably to gauge his, his limit, and replied, $5,000. Carter asked if they, would, uh, if they would fly, and they replied, weather permitting. Uh, in the party were four Frenchmen, Roland Garros, uh, Rene Simon, uh, Edmund Automers, and uh, Rene Barrier, uh, Frisbee, Cy Young, and Hamilton, who had uh, raced the 20th Century Limited from Al uh, Albany to uh, New York. The planes were brought to Fort Worth by train from Dallas. The pilots were reluctant to fly because of the slight breeze. Roland Garros finally took the mosquito-like plane into the air for 15 minutes despite protests of his comrades. Therefore, Fort Worth had its first taste of aviation. October 1911, Cal Rogers making a cross-country flight from Chicago to Los Angeles advertised a soft drink named Vin Fizz for Armour & Company. Stopped off in Fort Worth and was tendered a dinner by Carter and friends, at which Rogers uh, prophesied the time would come when a plane could fly from Chicago to the Pacific Ocean in 30 days. Unfortunately, Rogers' plane cracked up in, the, in uh, Pasadena on the 28th day. Uh, November 1915, United States Air Force moved from Fort Sill, Oklahoma to what was later known as Kelly Field. The first air squadron was headed by Captain Benjamin Floyd. Captain Floyd later was uh, air chief who landed planes number four, uh, 42A, a 90 horsepower biplane in a pasture before a crowd of 3,000. He was accompanied by the following crew members. Number 48, Lieutenant Thomas Bowen. Number 45, Lieutenant Joseph uh, Carberry. Number 52, Lieutenant uh, DeWitt Milling. 
number 43, Lieutenant uh, Ira Rader, and number 53, Lieutenant Carlton uh, Chapman. Carter was Toastmaster at a banquet that night in honor of the Flyers who remained over in Fort Worth from Saturday night till Monday morning. <clears throat> 1928, Carter assisted in the organization of Texas Air Transport, a predecessor of American Airways and later American Airlines. Carter has been a director of American Airlines since its organization more than 20 years ago. This was written in 1950. 1931, uh, first plane to fly mail and passengers in and out of Fort Worth, a travel air monoplane equipped with a J-5 motor and four cane bottom chairs was retired to Carter's uh, Shady Oak Farm by uh, Colonel Paul Henderson, who at the time was president of National Air Transport. <clears throat> uh, and that's the airplane we talked about that's been restored. Uh, August 1934, Carter was aboard Pan American Brazilian Clipper, opening the routes to uh, Rio Montevideo and Buenos Aires. October 1936, uh, Carter passenger on first Pan Am's Manila Clipper in inauguration of flight to the Philippines and Hong Kong. Uh, June 19, 1937, $150,000 administration building at Fort Worth's Municipal Airport, Meacham Field, dedicated to Carter, who called uh, Range Rider of the Air. Uh, July 1939, Ca Carter passenger on first Pan Am's Yankee Clipper opening northern route to Europe. Uh, 1940, Carter passenger on Pan Am's American Clipper opening service to Hawaii, Can Canton Island, New Caledonia, Auckland, New Zealand. 1941, War Department at urging of Carter and Chamber of Commerce selected Fort Worth its site for a $15 million bomber plant to be operated by Consolidated Aircraft Corporation. Carter christened the first B-24 bomber, uh, made a consolidated plant in Fort Worth with a gold plate naming the uh, ship City of Fort Worth. Later, Carter performed the same service on a B-32, likewise naming it City of Fort Worth using a gold plate. 1947, uh, Carter performed similar services in in placing a gold plate on the first B-36 uh, produced at the same consolidated plant. February 1949, B-50 Super Bomber uh, Lady Luck 2 took off from Carswell Air Base, Fort Worth uh, for a nonstop flight around the world. Carter presided at a dinner at which airmen of the plane were presented honorary citizenship in Fort Worth and given gold medals of aeronautical achievement. January 1950, Air Force Exceptional Service Award presented to Carter at Washington by Air Secretary W. Sturt Symington, who described Carter as one of the nation's foremost friends of both military and civilian aviation. Symington said the medal carried with it the gratitude of every man in the United States Air Force. June 1950, Carter, passenger on trip opening deluxe uh, strata, strata clipper service uh, for Pan American to Rio Montevideo and Buenos Aires. Uh, June 1950, Fort Worth City Council named $12 million new administration building and airfield at the Greater Fort Worth International Airport for Carter. Uh, petition filed by 170 civic leaders said Carter had led the fight uh, for the airport for eight years and Carter had brought first aviation to Fort Worth. The petition further stated that he was tirelessly and selfishly devoted to boundless energy and his own money to the purpose of building here a greater aviation center. His exceptional effort was brought to Fort Worth a cash flow of several billion dollars uh, for payrolls, material, and supplies. September 20, 1915, the, at New York, at the installation dinner of the American Legion Post 501, Carter was named to receive the 11th Annual Frank Hawks uh, Memorial Award on uh, December 5, 1950, for outstanding contributions to development and growth of military and commercial aviation. Uh, and that's just some of the things. Uh, I can tell you one, uh, one story that uh, I've always enjoyed was at that dinner, uh, the, the comment was made that Carter felt that he'd probably flown about a million miles. And somebody asked him that, that uh, had he ever been, been afraid at any of that point in time. And uh, he said, well, one time he was flying with Frank Hawks, uh, and they had an emergency and they had to land at Birmingham, Alabama. And, and, he, and that had uh, disturbed him somewhat. And they said, well, was it because of, the, uh, because of the emergency? And he said, no, it's because he didn't know anybody in Birmingham, Alabama. So there's a lot of myths surrounding Eamon Carter, but it's obvious that he was a, a, a huge moving force that has generated a change in the, in the culture and the economy of North Texas. It's turned Fort Worth into a world leader in aviation and aerospace, and uh, we felt it was time that he be recognized for, uh, for all of his efforts and the things that he's done, in which is now a business or a, an economy here that uh, 
almost 20% of the population here is involved in some kind of an aviation related uh, business. And it brings a total of uh, close to one, uh, $100 billion a year uh, of economic, direct economic impact to the area. So with that, we'd like to thank you for being with us. We know we've gone long today, but uh, we thought that that was gonna happen. Uh, we're gonna put up a picture of the awards later on up on the, uh, on the Facebook page. Thank you for being with us today. Gary, do, are there any questions? Nope. Okay, no questions. I guess you're all just amazed and mystified as we are. <laughs> But uh, again, we'd like to thank you for being with us today. We will be with you again next Wednesday. Don't have our subject uh, lined up yet. Uh, but thanks for being here with us today. And uh, please take the time to take a look at uh, some of the accomplishments of some of these people. So for that, we're going to say stay safe and be well. Bye. <laughs>